The current belief timeline brought forth by historians that farming started some 10,000 years ago will change drastically. There's been a recent discovery made in Germany by a Dutch team from the Leiden University in cooperation with a German team from the Johannes Gutenberg University. And this will change our perception of history and Neanderthals completely. My name is Kaylee and today we're going to look into this most recent discovery made at Neumark Nord in Germany and how this affects the historic timeline. As we all know, our ancient history is full of mysteries and unexplainable happenings and we humans have this innate sense of curiosity. We would like to know everything there is to know. I mean, me included, why else would I do what I do? We want to understand things fully to know more and this unending curiosity is leading us down some amazing paths. We have the best researchers in the world working all over the globe to broaden our understanding about life in ancient times and today's video delves into quite an important piece of our historic timeline. Most people, maybe not the viewers watching me, but most people in this world when they think of Neanderthals, they think of these super dumb cave dwellers that made ooga booga sounds and, you know, went extinct because they were dumb. Which, to be completely honest, is so far from the actual truth that we've already uncovered in the past decades. It's insane that they're still being portrayed as dumb by the masses. None of this is how they were in reality. And to me, it's a complete shame that they're still being portrayed by media often as these dumb stereotypes because we have evidence and there has been evidence uncovered for the past two or three decades at least that showed that Neanderthals were actually very intelligent and quite sophisticated. For instance, Neanderthals invented glue created from birch bark and they would use this to fasten their spearheads onto the wooden shafts. Neanderthals must have cared for their wounded and sick as kind of all Neanderthal remains that have been found show signs of at least one fracture or more. They really were more similar to modern humans than they've been given credit for in the past and it's a true shame because they are incredibly misunderstood. They are responsible for a lot of cave paintings in Europe and Neanderthals have created six structures in a cave in France by arranging approximately 400 large broken off stalagmites in semicircles up to nearly seven meters wide. These semicircles are believed to used to have rudimentary walls after construction that over time collapsed. They are dated to be at least 174,000 years old and will be covered in a future video, but I wanted to talk about Neanderthal intelligence quickly, so I just had to mention it. Forgive me. So when we think about agriculture and farming, we think about the planting of crops, the growing of crops, the harvesting of crops, the storing of crops. But before you're able to plant, grow, harvest and store crops, you need land for the crops to grow on. And one of the ways at least in ancient times that we used to create this sort of land was to clear the forests to create these large clearings. Clearings. Am I clear? And on that plot of land that we created to be completely free of other like big trees and stuff, uh, we used to grow plants. So one of the earliest signs of agriculture is the clearing of forests, the deforestation. We've seen this at, for instance, the Salisbury Plain where Stonehenge is located. It used to be a woodland and now it's an open space. It's not a woodland anymore. It's not a forest anymore. It's open grassland. As far as I know, all historians agree on this fact that you need to clear the forest to grow crops, which is the first sign of agriculture. The cutting down trees and clearing forests to create open grasslands was all needed for agricultural purposes. But until recently, it was believed that this did not happen before 10,000 years ago. 
Of course, there are some archaeologists who believed it could have happened sooner, but on a much smaller scale. Now, for the first time, we have evidence of landscape altering activities that were carried out by Neanderthals. And not only that, but these activities were carried out more than 10 times earlier. So not 10,000 years ago, but 125,000 years ago. That is a staggering difference. That is without a doubt changing the timeline of our history. Researchers from the Leiden University in the Netherlands and from the Johannes Gutenberg University in Germany have been carrying out excavations for several decades at a quarry known as the Neumark Nord near Halle in Germany. In this quarry, they have found a multitude of evidence of Neanderthal activity in the area. And among one of these is the indication that these hominids deforested areas to create grasslands around 125,000 years ago, during the last interglacial period. This is the earliest evidence of this particular activity ever recorded by the hands of a hominid, and it's incredibly significant. Now, I'm not saying that without a doubt Neanderthals were farming and they were conducting farming activities. But since we know that the deforesting is the very first step that is needed to be taken for agricultural purposes and this is exactly what they did, my mind and my hypothesis is that these Neanderthals were in fact, the first farmers. That's just how my mind works. If you clear the land, I mean, for what purpose? For what purpose would they clear this land on this grand of a scale? It's not just like one or two trees to create a fire. It's quite a massive clearing of land. Of course, we can't ever be sure until we find more evidence pointing this way. but. To me, it does seem highly probable. So in areas where there are no signs of Neanderthal inhabitation, the forests were almost completely untouched, showing no signs of ancient clearing of the trees. So that to me shows the significance of this discovery. Where there were Neanderthals, they cleared forests. And where there were not Neanderthal inhabitation, they did not clear forests. So even if they were passing through a location, they did not clear those forests. They cleared the forests around the places where they lived. I mean, every town has a farm, at least one. Open grasslands are easier to hunt on as well. And it's my hypothesis that they started cultivating certain easy to grow plants that were commonly used and they would have definitely, without a doubt, burnt the wood in their fires to keep themselves warm. Maybe even building shelters, although usually when they've created shelters, we can find the evidence of the wood that has rotten in the ground. In my research, I did not find this to be the case. So either it's too long ago, 125,000 years is a long time, but on the other hand, they really might have just used the wood for the fires and, you know, spear making and things like that for their arrows and their bows. It's all possible. In the area, the researchers discovered more things, including the remains of hundreds of slaughtered animals a multitude of stone tools, and a massive amount of charcoal remains. Among the slaughtered animals found in this location are the virtually complete skeletons of rhinos, straight tusk elephants, fallow deer and aurochs. So for a very long time it was believed that Neanderthals were scavengers and scavengers only. But this one location actually shows that this is absolutely not the case. So it's been debunked. Neanderthals have been proven in recent years to have been the top predators at the time. They had the stone tools like their spears that they used for hunting. They created fire to keep warm and possibly cook the meat. And they are believed to have lived in groups of around 10 to 20 people, including children. 
it's time that we change our perception of Neanderthals completely. And as more discoveries come out in the future, the history books will need to be rewritten to fit the real narrative as they were probably the ones who showed modern humans how things were done. We know that the two species of modern humans and Neanderthals have coexisted for quite some time and we know they interbred as there is a high number of Northern Europeans with up to 4% of Neanderthal DNA. It's easy to say that, oh, they just went extinct when, yeah, I mean, they did go extinct, but their legacy still lives on in a way in the Neanderthal genome that's been carried by quite a high number of Northern Europeans. And maybe I'm one of those people because in the next year, 2022, I will actually conduct a DNA test on myself to figure out everything that I can figure out and maybe link myself to ancient tribes and things like that. And yes, that will be a video. It's just going to take me a while because I'm not sure if I'm going to do it while I'm still in the Netherlands or, or if I'm going to wait until I'm like in the UK. Ah, we'll see. So I am planning a video in the future, near future, that will go more into depth about Neanderthal intelligence and their tool making and how the technology of their tool making actually spread because I do personally feel that Neanderthals taught modern humans quite a bit about their way of life, their spear making, their hunting skills, I mean, they were the top predators. I do personally feel that Neanderthals were very important in the development of modern humans. And I'm almost certain that we modern humans really learned a lot from them. So we need to stop pretending that they're just these ooga booga creatures because they weren't. And they were quite sophisticated as far as my research shows me. But yeah, I mean, Neanderthals farming, they could have actually been the first farmers 125,000 years ago. <laughs> Blows my mind. But if you enjoyed watching this video, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to see more of these kind of videos and click that bell icon if you want to be notified every time I upload. If you haven't seen my previous videos yet, then I'm not going to cry in the corner, but I'm going to feel very depressed. Click the card in the upper right corner and I have links in the description down below. And I also put videos in the end card, so click one of those. And I would like to thank my patrons and my channel members because y'all are awesome. Everyone watching is awesome, but they're just a little bit more awesome. Sorry. Floyd, Barry, Vaughn, Jeff Henderson, DJ, Klaus Jepsen, Ricky, Ira Whiteside, Malias Flavus, Tom Barkwell, Dibbler666, Timothy P. Smith and Gerald Lamontan. With a massive thanks to CJ, MV, e, J, B, y. And for the channel members, it's Folks, Folks, James Fisher, Debo, Kevin Waite and Ben Oppenheimer. Thank you all so much for watching another video and this Malibu pair was really very nice and I very much needed it and um, more videos coming soon. Goodbye! Okay,